using servos instead of traditional snap switches or even slow motion switch machines has gained more attention recently, mainly because of their controllability and the low price. A common servo type thereby is the SG90 rotational servo, which is available for as little as $2 a piece. For many model railroad applications though, a linear servo would be the better choice, but doing some research, I did not find a lot of information on this topic. So I thought it's time for a closer look. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. For my review and comparison, I ordered a set of two GS1502 servos from Amazon for a total of $15. Per servo that is about three times the price of an SG90, but then the GS1502 is smaller and provides a linear movement. The two servos came in a tiny plastic box and individually packaged in plastic bags. Looking at the servo, we can see the motor on the top side and right next to it the screw drive that converts the rotational movement to a linear one. The two spur gears provide a reduction by a factor of about 5. The component side of the PCB has a few resistors and mainly the KC9702 servo controller. Unfortunately the connector of the servo is using a 0.127mm pitch, while typical servo controllers provide a standard 2.54mm pitch output. So to connect the servo to a green hat I had to cut the cable and solder a pigtail with a 2.54mm connector to it. Not a big problem, but it takes time and adds to the cost. The good news is that I later found the same product equipped with a standard connector and even $2 cheaper, so there are options. Unfortunately, the datasheet that is available with the product description on Amazon is of very low resolution. So I have copied the most important values to the table here. Let's have a quick look. The control chip supports a standard PWM on time starting at 1.5 milliseconds. And more importantly, it can handle PWM frequencies from 50 to 330 Hz. Older servo controllers typically use 50 or 60 Hz, but newer devices also use high, higher frequencies. On the green hat, for example, I am using a PWM frequency of 100 Hz, so the servo should work without problems. The indicated torque output is meaningless information as it is converted to a linear movement, but I will measure in a minute what pulling force can be expected from the servo. The maximum moving speed at 5 volts is 67 mm per second when there is no load on the servo. It will slow down of course when the servo is loaded. The lifetime is indicated as more than 15,000 times, but unfortunately it is not clear whether these are single moves or complete cycles. Whatever it is, 15,000 is not a lot. In fact, when continuously operated at unloaded maximum speed, this results in a lifetime of 1 hour or less, compared to about 100 hours of continuous operation on a SG90 servo. So already from that datasheet I conclude that this servo is more for occasional movements than for continuous operation. The last item angle really should be named servo travel, which is 7 mm of linear movement from end to end. Again, that is not a lot, but might be sufficient for applications like setting a turnout. Longer travel distance certainly would be desirable. So after changing the connector, I hooked the servo up to a green hat. And just for comparison, I also hooked up an SG90 rotational servo to another of the 16 outputs. I then opened the green hat setup screen to set the boundaries of the movement. I carefully increased and decreased maximum and minimum values until the servo started to stall towards the end of the movement. It turns out that the maximum usable travel distance is about 8 mm, so slightly more than indicated in the datasheet. On the negative side though, if the servo runs into a mechanical stop, 
it would not break loose from it when starting the move in the other direction. I had to manually turn the gears to get it going again. This is not good design, I must say, and a careful setup with some reserve for overshooting is probably recommended. Just imagine the situation if the servo is installed somewhere on the layout and then stalls for some reason. You may have problems to access it to turn the spur gears to break it loose again. This could be a real showstopper for your operating session. Another thing I did not like is the wobbling of the spur gears and the drive screw as visible when the servo is active. Again, that does not look like high quality and might be the explanation for the relatively short life expectancy. Anyway, after setting the movement boundaries I operated the servo at lower travel speeds and that looked pretty okay, except for the wobbling which also was there at lower speeds. Next I tried the more complex move elements like bouncing and oscillation, as it can be used for semaphore signals. Unfortunately this did not work properly. Instead of the pull lever oscillating, all that oscillated was the drive screw. Obviously it has quite some play and the amplitude of the oscillation could be completely compensated by the screw moving up and down. Quite a difference to the oscillation I get on a rotational servo and another indicator for a certain lack of quality in the drivetrain of the GS1502 servo. So strictly linear movements were ok, oscillation and bounce back did not work because of the play. But then the servo was still unloaded. How would it perform under load and what would be the maximum pulling force? To find out I taped the servo to the desk and connected a spring scale to the drive shaft and preloaded it with one newton in the starting position. As before the servo supply voltage was at 5 volts, so a very normal voltage. I was rather surprised to see that the servo stalled already about halfway down, at the force of less than 2 newtons, and only when I released the force, the servo would continue to the target position. To have a reference, I repeated the test with the SG90 servo. I started to load the servo in the 90 degree position, and that revealed a significant difference to the linear servo, and about the only thing I really liked on the linear servo. With loads of more than 2 newtons, the rotational servo started to move backwards. The reason is that the green hat is configured that the servo power is removed after the servo has reached its position to avoid any humming noise. But since there is no power, the servo will move if a certain torque is applied. Not so the linear drive, the screw drive is not back drivable and the screw will break before the motor is moved. I like this feature because it guarantees that the servo position remains the same if the servo is not powered. But back to the pulling force of the SG90, so I applied the maximum force possible without back driving the servo around 2 newtons. Then I started the rotation and the servo moved 90 degrees without hesitation, thereby increasing the force to about 7 newtons. Ok, it is to say that the torque was not proportional to the force, since the angle changed and the resulting lever got shorter, but still 7 newtons I thought was quite impressive. The linear servo on the other hand developed just a little less than 2 newtons. That was clearly below my expectations. As part of my testing I also did a quick and dirty 3D printed enclosure for the servo. It is rather big about 45 by 45 mm as I thought to use it as a replacement for the G-scale turnout motors from some LGB turnouts. Well, that was before I measured the pulling force. But anyway, if you have your own projects using the GS1502 servo, you might be interested. As part of the design, I did a model of the servo device itself, 
along with a support and hold down structure. Those design elements are separate in the file so you can easily make a box of the size you like and then put the structural elements into it and you have your customized housing. If interested you can download the STL file from Tinkercad. Just use the link in the description of this video. So let me summarize my findings. The GS1502 is a lightweight linear servo built on a PCB of only about 20 by 15 mm, so it fits very small locations. The control signal and supply voltage is standard, so it should work with every servo decoder like the Green Hat, the Digitrax DS78V and others. The screw drive used to create the linear movement is not back drivable, which provides a built-in protection against position changes if the servo is not powered. This is a clear advantage compared to rotational servos. The movement of the pull bar is relatively constant and smooth, even at low speeds, but it has significant blade, which makes it impossible to simulate oscillations and bounce back. The usable travel distance is 7 to 8 mm, which is rather short, if not too short, for many applications. The maximum pulling force is only about 2 newtons. This is probably not enough for many applications. If the servo is running against the mechanical stop, it is blocked and user interaction is needed to set the gears free again. This becomes a real problem if the servo is not easily accessible on the layout. The redu reduction gears are made from plastic, most likely nylon. They wobble when rotating and overall it seems the gears are the weak point of the servo. The lifespan is rather short, only about 15,000 movements. If continuously operated at maximum speed, this can be achieved in less than one hour. So the servo should only be used for applications with infrequent position adjustments, for example lowering the gates at the railroad crossing. Overall, I am not really convinced about the performance of this linear servo. In my opinion, it should only be used for applications with very tight space restrictions, low pulling force requirements and infrequent usage. In all other cases, I clearly would prefer rotational servos, which are not only stronger and more durable, but you also get three of them for the price of one of these linear servos. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click on like and subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.